Hey there, I'm Gavin Stewart, and you're watching Bits and Bobs, a series of quick, random, interesting facts to keep your mind sharp and your senses invigorated. Let's get to it. Number 10, ginseng. If you've ever peered over the list of ingredients on certain energy drinks, you may have noticed they sometimes contain ginseng. Not to be confused with ginger, the Panax ginseng plant is grown for its roots, which contain compounds such as ginsenicides and gintonin, which are used for their supposed health benefits, such as serving as an antioxidant, improving cognitive function and erectile dysfunction, boosting the immune system, increasing energy levels, and lowering blood sugar. Number nine, the Black Plague. While the timing of this factoid may be a little inopportune, it is interesting nonetheless. The Black Plague was one of the worst pandemics in human history, with its death toll reaching an estimated 75 to 200 million people across the region of Eurasia. It is thought to have been spread by the fleas in rats' fur, the rats having stowed away in merchant wagons or ships. The disease is thought to have originated in Asia, then spread to the area surrounding the Mediterranean then to Europe. The reason this plague is referred to as the bubonic plague is because it caused buboes to appear on the body. For reasons of decency, we'll spare you any further detail. Number eight, machine learning. Machine learning, as you can probably guess, is how we teach machines to do certain tasks. It's the processing of algorithms and statistical models by computers used to achieve certain outcomes without direct control of a human. Lots of us have seen the fancy AI-based apps and software used to perform certain mind-blowing tasks such as restoring photos or for special effects like a Snapchat filter. But did you know that machine learning traces back to the birth of modern computing? Arthur Samuel, a pioneer of artificial intelligence, coined the term machine learning back in 1959. Back then and through to the 1980s, artificial intelligence and machine learning were very primitive by today's standards, with computers only achieving simple tasks like recognizing simple patterns or characters. Number seven. Go. Now that you're thinking of machine learning, you might be remembering AlphaGo, the supercomputer program that beat a human professional Go player back in 2015. But what exactly is the game Go? Go traces back to ancient China and has been played around the world for the past 2,500 years. It's an abstract strategy board game for two people, sort of like chess, but the rules are very different. The game is played by each player taking turns placing stones on a grid. The object of Go is to capture territory on the board, with the winner taking the most territory. Number six, binary. Unlike life, those Go stones really are black and white. The same could be said for binary, or the base two numeral system, where there are only two ways to represent value, most commonly a one or zero. While the modern binary number system has been studied since the 16th century, it has appeared in many cultures long before this time period, such as Egypt, India, and China. The Chinese system, known as I Ching, dates back to the 9th century BC and is based on the Taoist duality of yin and yang, eight trigrams and 64 hexagrams, the latter two being analogs of three bit and six bit binary numbers respectively. Number five, induction cooktop. If talking about China has you craving some proper Asian style noodles, you may be thinking about using that fancy induction cooktop to cook up some of your own. Some of you might be even wondering, how does this induction cooktop even work? Well, it might seem like magic, but it's science. In induction cooking, a coil of copper wire is hidden below the pot or pan, where an alternating current of electricity has passed through the wire. This causes an alternating magnetic field, which causes electric current to flow inside the pot. The current flowing inside the resistive metal of the pot results in heat, and lots of it. Plenty of heat to cook up those delicious ramen noodles. Yum. Number four, calamari. And of course, you'll need some protein to go with all those carbs and those tasty noodles, and what better than some calamari? Calamari, of course, being the seafood staple that is squid. The name calamari is speculated to have come from the terms calamar, calamaro, and calamari of Spanish, Italian, and Greek, respectively. These terms derive from calamarium, Latin for ink pot, and since squids do contain ink, yeah. Squid meat contains from 67 to 80% protein, and this fussy eater thinks it tastes pretty good too. Number three. Honduras. In Mexico, it is common to serve squid meat with Tabasco sauce or habanero, and Mexico is roughly 200 kilometers away from Honduras, which is the topic of this next factoid. It's a country in Central America, and it borders Guatemala, Nicaragua, and El Salvador. The Republic of Honduras' name in Spanish literally means depths. This is thought to refer to the Bay of Trujillo, the dialectic term Fondura, or to Christopher Columbus' alleged quotation of 
Thank God we have departed from those depths. The term Banana Republic originated to describe Honduras, a country whose economy went hand in hand with banana production in the formative years of the banana industry. Number two. Panama disease. If that last factoid has you craving a banana, you might want to reach for the sweet yellow fruit sooner than later, as the future of the banana is threatened by a fungus known as Panama disease. The fungus already made one cultivar of banana functionally extinct. It was called the Gros Michel, and it was the dominant banana of the early 1900s. Legend has it that the Gros Michel tasted much better than today's most popular banana, the Cavendish. But Panama disease struck in the 1950s, and banana plantations made the switch to the Cavendish banana, which was resistant to Panama disease at the time. But a new strain of Panama disease has come into existence in the relatively recent past, and it greatly threatens the future of the Cavendish banana industry. Number one. 3.5 millimeter auxiliary. If you're about to hop into your car to drive to the grocery store to buy a bunch of bananas, you might want to pump some tunes while you're driving. If you've ever paused to think about that magic auxiliary cord, this next factoid is for you. The origin of the cord you use to connect your phone to your stereo is in the telephone industry. It's called the phone connector, and it's the first time a connector of this style was ever used. It was used on telephone switchboards back when operators manually connected your lines together so you could chat. The technology was miniaturized to turning a 6.35 millimeter quarter inch jack into the three and a half millimeter jack we love today. Did you know there's also a two and a half millimeter size? And that does it for this episode of BNB. If you liked it, be sure to smash that like button, drop a comment below, and subscribe for more. Thanks so much for watching guys, and we'll see you in the next video.